Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Thinker versus Speaker. If you can't tell, it's a little different today. I'm Marissa the Thinker. Speaker. He's taking a little break right now. He's taking a little break right now. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. It's all good. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it thumping. We got a special guest in the building today. We got Kay came through to help me out today. Okay, Kay. Kay. How you doing? I guess you can say my real name since, like, the I know we want to be talking a little bit about some in depth stuff in case people want to actually look me up. Uh, okay, okay, okay. My okay. name is Kachina Lucas. Okay, you feel me? That's K A apostrophe capital C H E N A L U C S. Or you can find me on Facebook. It's also my name on Instagram. My first name, but after the A, just the two underscores and Chena. Cool. Well, since we looking you up, so since we looking you <laughs> up, you know, let, let, I have we ever like formally introduced to? Like, I mean, you know, ever told on, I told the audience anything about yourself? I know this ain't your first time here, but like, no, I feel like I've always just came on like, SK. Well, this K, I never talked about what I do and like, yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> well, now's the time. Tell us about yourself. What What's the story behind uh, Miss Kachina? Good day. Well. I'm a social worker. I'm a licensed social worker here in New Jersey and also in Missouri, period. I'm also, uh, so right now what I do is I'm a therapist part-time. I'm a school social worker. I'm a yoga instructor. I'm a badass, just like yogi, goddess. Yes. Of all the things that like I ever wanted to be. And that's kind of like strange to say that, but it's like I love all the different roles that I have both like um, in terms of like employment and also outside of that, because I'm also a Monty, a sister, a daughter, and a bomb ass friend. <laughs> Absolutely. I second all of those things that you said. <laughs> Thank you. I definitely second them. Oh, there's so many different ways I could go with this. Um, I'm just so excited. I get to ask you all the questions and stuff. But um, yeah, it's, it's so interesting how like as you grow like you learn like the different hats that we can put on and still like maintain like when I was growing up I definitely thought like um being a adult like you got this one job right and then you've got a family and then life like yeah I thought so too I tell the kids all the time I'm just like you don't have to like say you want to be one thing you can be all the things like I told them I'm like I'm a social worker but I also do yoga but I also tap into other things. I also do consult consulting. Like I do all of the things that I find interesting because you don't have to just put your, your, your like I guess egg in one basket. You can spread that shit around. That's yes. just how you learn because, granted, people be in their professions for like decades, but it's like you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You have a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's just like actually the more things that you learn how to do I think like the more balanced you kind of become in a sense in a very weird yeah. way yeah. you know what I'm saying because you don't have to put all of your eggs in one basket like you really balance becomes important because you have so many things mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that I definitely learned because it was easy for me to let a lot of things go but like when now that I'm trying to juggle so many things like it's important to me that I take care of the different aspects of my life like okay am I still being a good daughter am I still being good at work am I still giving enough to you know my different projects that I have going on how does my body feel mm -hmm. like and I didn't used to ask all of those questions and like mm -hmm. to maintain all of those things requires like you know discipline and like certain actions of me and it's so strange because I'm not used to having that in my life but it actually makes my life better like you seem like you busier like you know what I'm saying like from like when I was like in my shot fully in my shadow it's just like oh my god like 
I don't, all those things sound difficult. Yeah. No, like I don't want to do them. But like once you actually start doing them, it's like a, it's a better payoff. And then, yeah. Okay. But um, how did you end up, because you, you were a, became a social worker first, right? Yeah. So like I started grad school back in 2017. I guess I always knew I wanted to be like a social worker in the social work field because I always wanted to like help people. Like, you know, it's a broad ass statement. <laughs> I never knew like how I wanted to help people, but I know this is a field that like I can help people and make impacts on like such a profound level that would actually actually make sense because it's like everybody says they want to help, but it's like in what ways are we helping? I know in social services that there are so many different ways, and I just wanted to tap into all of that. I just wanted to see where I can get in and fit in. So like originally, I wanted to be like a program director or like a CEO of like a nonprofit that work with homelessness, with, with homeless people, like the homeless population. Well, actually not homelessness, houseless, because it's like homelessness is really not the word because, eh, they just don't have houses. Like people have homes within them, but they just don't have physical houses to like lay their bodies. But that's mm. the story. Okay. <laughs> that's the whole. We'll get to go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm not, I ain't gonna say you there. I'm like, Houseless people, you feel me? And I was really upset because I was like, I've experienced a little bit of like um, homelessness when I was in college. It was really brief, but that brief moment was just like a lot. But I don't think that was the reason why I wanted to help houseless people. I just wanted to because it's like a house is the that security, like being able to go home to your house and have a warm cooked meal to have a roof over your head. Like that is just like so it's so overrated that like yeah, you know, take it for granted but it's just like you don't know what that shit feels like until like you're literally on the streets and you don't know where your next meal is coming from you don't know what the next thing looks like and it's just like i wanted to help those people like find homes and like kind of rebuild security mm-hmm. so i worked with the salvation army in my um grad program for a little bit but then i kind of I was into that, but then I realized, like, how much I don't like nonprofits because, like, they yeah. don't. <laughs> they, like, they say all the good things. They make it sound good. There's no shade to nonprofits who out there doing work. All praise to y'all. But, like, there are a lot of nonprofits who are, like, not doing the work, but they keep getting all the little benefits and the monies to continue to, like, push these agendas of how they're so progressive and they're making all these changes, but they're not. And I'm like, I don't want to be a part of that because, like, if you're not really making changes and we're going to keep doing the same thing, and not really trying to address the status quo, you can me out. So that's kind of why I departed from like that. And then I want to say in 2020, I got into school social work, love that job like down. And that's what really made me want to get my licensure to be a therapist. But I'm just like, I think these kids could definitely impact, have a bigger impact from me being able to not only being their social worker, but also having like some clinical skills in my wheelhouse, just so I'm able to kind of help them better and like be able to really understand their trauma and actually give them coping skills to deal with it. So that's what kind of like drew me to get my licensure, which I got in October of 2021 back in Missouri. And then I applied for my licensure when I got back here in Jersey. And I've been officially licensed in Jersey since March. Okay. Yeah. Okay, check you out. So, you know, <laughs> yo, like, I, I, I think therapists are, like, so underrated and misunderstood, um, like, in our community for some reason. Like, oh, God. like I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I even went before I went. So before I started going to therapy, uh, you know, of course, I would have the thoughts, like, you know what I'm saying? Where you get in your head? Because, like, I feel like, you know, I would go through, like, little depressive moods, but not, like, super depressive mood i think like you know like it, it doesn't it to get like you know regular what's it called it's not clinical depression it's situational seasonal or no i think my therapist i think she called it situational depression like if i'm going through some shit like if i'm going through some deep shit and it's just like yeah you you get depressed like <laughs> you know i didn't understand because it's like sometimes people really have like Spells of depression, but they're yeah, like, anywhere is like lasted for like months, absolutely, or, or so long, and that's absolutely true because I feel like you you all time go through depression in moments like that when you about to make a breakthrough when like things become so overwhelming that you long gotta give yeah get down 
and like out but then you find that spark again that literally pushes you to come out of that sometimes so everybody doesn't work like that obviously yeah. that's why therapists are a thing that's why meditation is a thing that's why these resources are a thing because some people literally cannot do that work on their own oh okay and that's like where i would be right like i would be sitting in the midst of these like depressive states mm -hmm. and like thinking to myself like do i need it <laughs> <laughs> like you know do i need help you though <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like you know and telling myself like yeah you should probably go talk to somebody because mm -hmm. you need to learn how to deal with this shit mm -hmm. and telling myself like no nah, it's not that bad it ain't nothing wrong with you like you know what i'm saying what if you go and they you actually find out there's something wrong with you like Oh, I would fuck yeah. with you. That's the one right there. <laughs> let me go ahead and let me go and find out. I'm really crazy. Nine dozen in psych wars. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What if come to find out I'm actually crazy? <laughs> this one, like, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, what if I'm just not crazy and I'm wasting money on something that I could have just figured out on my own? What about that? Yeah. Like, <laughs> do I really need this one? What are they going to tell me that I already don't? That I don't already <laughs> fucking know about myself. What's that much confirmation that I will pay for confirmation? The therapist gonna tell me about me. Why don't nobody <laughs> tell me about me? Like, and it's just like, why do we do that? <laughs> That's so fu funny you said that because I remember when I first was like having conversations about therapy, it was probably like my junior year of college. It was my, I forget what class this was. I want to say maybe it was my feminist, feminist theories class, but either way, the, um, sociology teacher she was also the chair and I was pretty close to her she was my mentor and I don't know what we talked about in class or like what the conversations was but like I really wasn't able to like connect and be like compassionate and like be open and vulnerable like I really could not do that like it was just not there for me to like not be hard like I'm like siblings what's that I don't got feelings oh I just want to be logical like let's talk about how this makes sense because swords don't make sense like but papers <laughs> and numbers and Research makes sense, but like feelings, I don't really get that. And I was in her office one day and she was like, have you ever thought about going to therapy? Like, I think you could benefit from going to therapy. I was like, Miss Hall Paul, uh, I hear the hesitation. But black people go go to therapy. I'm like, that's really not something we do. So I'm not going to do that. And I was dead ass. Like, I'm not going to therapy. I'm like, she bugging. Like, she think I'm crazy or something. She's like, maybe she started journaling or something. I was like, I started journaling or whatever. But I feel like I was journaling for her so she could see that, like, I have feelings, but, like, I don't have to, I don't know what the fuck I was doing, but I was journaling to please her. I wasn't journaling to get anything out of it. I'm just like, I'm a journal because you think I could journal, but then you know what she wants to do because it's like, I'm not crazy. I don't need to go to therapy. I'm like, nobody in my family been in therapy. That's how I think we do. So why do you think I'm about to go do it? She's like, I go to therapy and I just go because sometimes it's, it's nice to have somebody to talk to. Even if you don't feel like you're going crazy, anything's wrong. It's nice to have a therapist. And I also was struggling with like what I was going to do after college because like I was just like really afraid of like, I guess how great I could be because I'm like, mm, I'm not about to get my master's. I'm pretty concerned with my bachelor's. Like, what do I need a master's for? I can get a job with my bachelor's. And I was struggling with like how I'll be perceived with my family, like, oh, shoot, they'll think if I go get my master's, or, like, I'm too bougie, or, like, I'll be too far gone from... Yo, <laughs> what? And I'll be really be on that shit. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? All these daddy have yeah. degrees. And this is what's... And this is what's... You just think you better than everybody, huh? And then okay. I felt, I was like, no one's gonna really want to fuck with me, because they're like, oh, she do. She got her degree. She thinks she better, even though, like, I'm... Everybody I'm down to earth is fuck. Like, I don't even brag on the fact that, like, I have a master's, or that I'm licensed, because... I did that shit. It was it wasn't a piece of cake, but it's like I did that because like it had to be done. Like somebody in the family has to go and pave that way. So like that future generations could go ahead and continue to build up like this generational wealth that we're gonna be coming into. So I'm like yeah, it's, I yeah. do what had to be done, but I'm like, um I was a little nervous. I'm just like, my master, that's a lot. Nobody got their masters, like what am I about to go do with a master? Like what am I about to go do at a graduate program like it, it wasn't making sense to me. The math wasn't nothing. <laughs> and I, was, I ain't gonna lie about that. You ain't gonna lie. Like, when I met you, too, I gave you, like, that was, like, that blew me away. I was like, yeah, she gonna get her motherfucking master's parents. And she gonna watch you. She's smart as fuck. I like her. 
where I'm like, I, yeah, I was, I was doing the damn thing. And I was, and it's the fact of the matter. I was so insecure about, even though all these weird things was happening to me, I was still like insecure and like not really willing to talk highly of myself. I'm just like, I love you, my masters. Okay. And I go to the Brown school. Like, like it was nothing. It's yelling. I know it's like, nigga, no, it's not. Like, <laughs> nigga, that was on like my top two schools. Really <laughs> good. It was like, this nigga is either going to wash you or sleep. Like, even fuck. Like, you know what I'm saying? You went to that motherfucking school. Like, wait. That's true. I mean, looking back, I'm like, obviously, like, I, I brag a little bit. You feel me? Like, I'm a bit of brown suit. Fuck what you're talking about. I'm smart as hell. I, I knew it for you, friend. I, I got you. <laughs> Thank you. Because I can't be my own shit here. Okay, I got I'm behind the police system with her. Hi. Fuck, nah. She dope as fuck. She <laughs> smart as fuck. Like, <laughs> what is you talking about? Like, <laughs> her. Okay. But no, nah, yeah, therapy. <laughs> It was so funny because it's just like when I I made the decision to finally go to therapy, like it was a um it was very much a like all right, so some gotta give like it was it was very much at that breaking point. It's just like okay, now some thoughts we just don't think. We grew up in church, you know you can't think like this. Yeah, so, so you need to go talk. To somebody. <laughs> somebody you gotta give, nigga. Something gotta give because you can't go. So, um, what we gonna do? It's like, well, shit, my leg broke. My insurance gonna pay for it. I guess it's mm-hmm. time. Like, <laughs> it's just fucking time. And, like, I had no idea what to fucking expect. Like, whatsoever. Like, no clue. It was just like, I don't even know what the hell this shit's gonna do. Mm-hmm. But I happened to get lucky enough to get a black therapist and we connected well. And okay. we connected, like, immediately. Oh. I had like, you know how you put in like the little search things or whatever, because even like a- another big reason of why I wouldn't I would make excuses to not do therapy was because I thought it was hard to find a therapist. It was just like, where the fuck do you even begin to find a therapist? <laughs> like, People make it seem like it's hard. Where did I do your research? Because my first couple of experiences, like I wasn't feeling my therapist, but it's also the fact that I was resistant to therapy as well. Yeah. So that could play a role. Yeah, being receptive to therapy is everything. Like, it ain't even no point in going if you, if you don't believe in it. If you don't think that there's going to be a benefit to it, you're going to just struggle with anybody you get because you already don't believe in the methods that they're going to use. Exactly. Because they probably will have you doing some shit that you ain't really wanted to do before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Re- reflecting on things you don't really want to reflect on. Accountability. Niggas hate that. Can it go to school? <laughs> Okay, because you hit the nail on the head, like, definitely, because one of the first methods that my therapist used with me is journaling. So um, she was having a hard time getting me to, like, draw out experiences because, like, you know how you could kind of compart- compartmentalize shit? Yeah. Like, back in the day, it's just like, you know, we don't think about feelings. So, like, you asking me, like, what made me feel this feeling in the past and I done put that shit in a box, locked it and put, you know what I'm saying? Put it in a closet, buried it three feet underground and like forgot about it. Like, I don't want to go back there. Like, I put that yeah. shit where I put it in our plan on leaving it there and you trying to get it out. So like she had me start journaling a little bit because we wasn't really getting nowhere in therapy. I was trying, but we wasn't getting nowhere. So she had me start journaling it. And, uh, <laughs> Like, I, at first, I thought it was just like, man, I ain't got no time for this shit. Like, I got all this shit going on. I ain't got no fucking yeah. time to mm-hmm. fucking be journaling and shit. But, you know, she gonna hold you accountable because the next session she done asked you to write this prompt and to bring back an example. So, like, I gotta have something on this fucking paper. So, it's like mm-hmm. 15, it's on my 15 minute break while I'm at work and I got therapy right after work. That day. So, I'm on my 15 minute break. I write, like, a quick little journal or whatever. I go back to the, I go back to there. I actually got some significant shit off of my chest in that meantime. <laughs> like, went back to therapy. We talked about it. She told me to do it like two more times. And before I know it, I got like a habit of fucking journaling. You journal every motherfucking day sometimes go for day. So shout out to your therapy. Yo, she straight <laughs> turned me into a writer. 
she, <laughs> she bought it out. It was already there. She My bought it out. My made a superstar. Like, it was already there. There's a trophy you bring out was already there. I'm convinced. It's like all the stuff that we had that we needed already within us. But sometimes you need significant people in your life to really show you what it is. And I think therapists have like a cool role in significant roles in people's life when they can bring out those qualities in you, especially especially good ones. Yo, okay. So like what's a good therapist and a bad therapist? Because I've only had one good therapist. What's a bad therapist? I'm going to just start off with this. I'm going to say a bad therapist is a therapist who does not have their own therapist. Everybody needs therapy, including the therapist. So if they're, like, not having their own therapist and having their own, like, check-in, that's a red flag for me. I, w- I wouldn't even know. I don't know what a bad therapist is. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I can say what a bad therapist is. I can't really give no concrete examples, but that's definitely one of them. One of them, another one would be just somebody who's not willing to learn and grow in a profession who's not just wants to educate themselves on different cultures, different methodologies and different ways of doing things. I would say that's not a good therapist because you want somebody who's also learning to evolve, evolve and grow and also eliminate any biases that they may have. Cause you want them to be human like you, obviously they have a specific job, but you also want to know they're growing, learning, expanding their education and continue to stay up on what's, what's happening. A good therapist would be that person who has a therapist who's growing and learning, who's present, who's in tune with their clients, who's able to like recognize what's working and what's not working, being able to effectively communicate. I think that's, those are good therapists. But I'm sure there's more qualities. What do you think a good therapist is? You've you've had one, what it sound like? Yeah, I was just thinking too, like a good quality like that I would look for in a therapist is like a certain level of Mm open-mindedness. Because I know a lot of people worry about, you know, when you go in and you telling somebody who, you know, seems to be a stranger, like you telling them like all your problems and shit, like you wondering if they gonna judge you and actually um, They are. <laughs> That's our job to judge you. Like we're gonna judge you, but we're gonna also help you. It's like we have to take what you're saying and obviously look at how we're gonna help you and what Biology and what like way what's going to work best for you but it's like it, it, it's a sense of judgment but it's good judgment it's not like oh you're a bad person because you did that this that and third that would be a bad therapist because they'll be bringing their own biases and their own opinions into your sessions into that space and it's like that's not they're supposed to be open judgment free and allow you to be vulnerable because that's the whole basis of going to therapy to like open up to be vulnerable to be able to share your story in move beyond your traumas yeah absolutely and i like in mine like i never never felt good you know what i'm saying like she definitely like hold me accountable but i think more so than anything like the thing that i liked about my therapist was she gave me something that i wasn't initially used to which was somebody acknowledging my feelings oh yes 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 all of that that's why i love my last therapist because she just made me feel like i'm not crazy like yeah i feel validating even though like i may have had people in my life who made me feel that way but going to therapy it just felt like good to say what i have to say and like not feel like i was alone but it also helped me to like reach out to people who I am close to and be able to also do that with them and not just my therapist. Absolutely, exactly. So she made me, she like, she kind of like, that giving me that validation, like, is one of the things that like helped teach me that I don't even need the validation. Yeah. But like, she would do that, like she would validate my feelings and then she would also follow that up with an alternative perspective mm-hmm. of how to view the situation. And I think that gave me a more dynamic perception of the world it's one of the things that helped me like mature my thought process because it's just like you know like yes your feelings in that particular moment are valid you have every right to feel how you want it how you feel Mm -hmm. but also have you taken these other things into consideration and a lot of the times they will be things that I never took into consideration before Mm -hmm. which doesn't change how you feel because how you feel matters but is it possible to feel how you feel and other things be true as well? And that kind of like expanded like how I view and perceive things and it made it easier for me to like not be so emotional about certain situations because it made me realize like it's other perception. Oh, what what did she do with me? Um, oh, this was like real early in our sessions. It's cognitive something. 
therapy. Yeah. 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 The cognitive yeah. dissertation. Is that what it is? No, cog- cognitive behavior therapy. <laughs> can, you help, can you help me explain it to the people? <laughs> Dang, you want me to put my thinking hat on? Yes, ma'am. You the therapist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. It's like non therapy, like my thinking hat is <laughs> off. So that's. I'd say that's more so with the mind and like you changing like how you think. Don't quote me on this because I'm still learning. So like I don't want to say anything wrong because I don't have I don't I'll say it because I'm not a professional. You go ahead and say what you think she did because I know what it's called and I feel often. But um I use I use more so like mindfulness and like strength based approaches when I like and also I do a lot of faith therapy as well because I work with younger kids. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm getting more uh training on cognitive and DBT, which is dialectical behavior therapy. That that's focused around like a lot of mindfulness, which I already do, but like I wanna enhance that because it's like I'm only six months in in therapy as a therapist all this shit is very new to me because I thought I knew shit but like I don't know a lot (laughs) (laughs) it's a process yeah (laughs) it's definitely a process but uh what they took me through um it was kind of like where things were asking me like four questions and like I'll have to look this up just check on the page I'll post these things around the episode I'll look them up and I'll post them but uh, it's basically like it asks four questions. It's just like, okay, w- what did you feel? Like, what are the facts of this situation? What other things could be possible? And like, um, what other ways could I have reacted to something? Because what I basically would do is I would take one thought, run with it and blow it up. And I would like react emotionally off of that one thought that I like ran with and like, there are no other thoughts on my mind. So like, for example, um, say like, um, if you used to somebody texting you at a certain time or whatever. Mm -hmm. So if they don't text you at a certain time, it's just like, now your mind starts racing. Like this, this could be something, this could be something, this could be something, this could be something. Or you go back to some like triggered feeling. That's what it is. it's, It's getting triggered. So you go back to like a feeling where you felt something. So it's like, it must be this, it must be this, it must be this. So like, say if like you five and your mama don't pick you up um, from latch key on time, <laughs> going back in time, this is me, I'm them. So like, if your mama always picks you up at five o'clock, but now it's five oh five. And now you're looking at the clock and you like, oh my God, it's five oh five. She actually came by the like it's the drama the fucking drama <laughs> yeah and it's just like what i learned to do is just like ask more questions it's like could there be traffic yeah because she has gotten off late are all those things possible yes absolutely do you need to react this way probably not no it to help you like really manage your problems by changing like how you think Mm-hmm. It behaves. It's really yeah. good for anxiety because it's like, like you said, is this a real uh-huh. thing or am I making this up in my head? Am I like adding things that are actually not that? Yeah. Yes. Also, can un- other things be true? Yes, absolutely. And that kind of keeps you just from like just overreacting because I feel yeah, like it grounds you a bit. It's a family inherited trait. We just like we be off with the shit, yo. We be off with it. Same here. We like to panic. My mom is like the most dramatic person I've ever met. She can see a fly on the wall. She's yelling like, like somebody came in here and slaughtered. I like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like, it's a fly on the wall. Like, why are you yelling and screaming? Like, Gene, it's not that deep. <laughs> Yo, no. It's the end of the world. It just might as well be over. Just take me out now, Jesus. Um, okay, cool. So like, is there a significant difference between like, okay, because you know how some people when they, when they think about their it's just like I'll just go talk to my mama or my grandma. Oh, like, my friends, like they got me. Like, what's the difference here? Um, difference is um, <laughs> big difference. Life, you know, <laughs> they got that license, that that uh, that professional background. <laughs> they yeah. it. 
not to say that people don't give good advice because I feel like I was always giving advice even when I was like in high school I was just that person who was like always had sound and, and rational and reasonable advice even though I could not give it to myself I absolutely yeah. take that and give it to others <laughs> yeah the difference is that professional background people I like I hate this so much that we try to like diagnose or self-diagnose especially with social media and it's just like go so fucking professional for real because i would have told you that i had clinical depression but i don't Bitch. i really don't <laughs> like i thought i was bipolar like you know what i'm saying i really thought it was shit wrong with me no nah, nah like not at all you be out here thinking you need medicine you don't like you some people do medicine. some people do well like, you probably don't you probably just need to talk to somebody Cause like a lot of what I was dealing with was just me not knowing how to like regulate my feelings properly and like understanding my feelings and just like dealing with a lot of the things. You know what I'm saying? Just dealing with things that were just holding me back in general. Yeah. I feel like we talked about that a bit, just like not being able to like regulate our feelings because there were just like certain feelings that we associated with everything. I didn't know my feelings at all. I only knew anger. I knew anger for a really, really long time. That was like my comfort feeling. If I was upset and I really wanted to be sad, I'm going to be angry because angry was comfortable. I knew how to be angry. I had to curse people out. I had to shut people out. I had to be upset. I had to be irrational, even though like I'm really sad. You hurt my feelings. I'm not mad at you, but like I'm sad that you thought it was okay to hurt my feelings or you did something to hurt my feelings. But instead of me doing that, I'm going to be a raging bitch because. That's much easier for me to do versus me to sit here and be vulnerable and say that I'm actually fucking sad. Yeah. That's so real. That's so real. Because for me, it was to be a martyr. Like, like in my <laughs> mind, I just let everybody walk on my feelings mm -hmm. and just, like, step on my poor little heart. And I'm going to just go in my room and cry. Oh, y'all know cancer is dramatic. Oh. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> but we ain't even want to talk about Zodiac. We're gonna leave that for another episode. But you know, that was my thing. I liked being depressed. Not I liked it, but I mean, it was my it was my comfort zone. Right? Go to the Philly. You enjoy that because you. I was just I was actually watching something today that I went to see, and this man was talking about like the brain, how like the brain when it's in survival mode, how fear, anxiety, and these different emotions are associated with survival mode because we know these feelings we can go to them and we associate different things with them and that's what we always go to video it was a good ass fucking um video i was watching one forward and i'm like that's so true because these feelings are like tacked on survival mode because it's like when you live in anxiety and fear that means we do not trust that we are okay we do not trust that things are going to be better we do not trust or feel like yep. things. he was saying how like people say that those are human feelings but it's like they're human feelings because, like, we make it so normal to be anxious, to be in fear, to, like, have yeah. it. And it's just, like, we could not have those feelings. We could literally think about having a good life, having a good day without being anxious, feeling okay about ourselves, and kind of, like, actually embodying that. But it, it takes some practicing. But he talked about manifesting and visual manifestation a little bit. But that's the whole, that's also another episode. But <laughs> I, I just want to add that in the come live. That that is really true. When you think about it, those feelings are associated with with survival. You need to feel that in order to in order to do whatever it is the fuck you think you gotta do. And it's like you don't gotta be anxious. You don't have to be fearful. Like because we're not in those moments or experiencing those traumas that we've been through. Because oftentimes associated with some past trauma, like oh I'm anxious because one time this happened and now I think every time I go and do this is going to happen. And it's just like it could actually not happen you can actually go and have a good time and not yeah. have any fucking worries but because we associate whatever it is with these different feelings every time we go and do different things we're going to keep having those same feelings because yep. that's what association is yeah yeah i was uh thinking this to myself the other day because you know like I, I, sometimes i think to myself when it comes to like work that i want to do as far mm -hmm. as like more than my own life forward I feel like I kind of get in the way sometimes mm -hmm. and like I was thinking it's just like so like what's blocking me from getting where it is that I need to go like, what's keeping me here and mm -hmm. 
for the most part, it's really me making certain changes that I'm afraid to make. Mm. It's literally like me committing to certain changes because it's like it's almost like when you think about like, oh, my stuff's not moving the way that I want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? why? And then like once you stop thinking about the why and think about like, OK, what what am I doing and what can I change? And like, you know, where I was looking outward for the solution, I started looking inward for the solution again. Mm-hmm. So it's like changing the way that I think, because when I would get into thought patterns like that in the past, it would be like, uh, like I would be stuck in that place of like, hello, why are things not going the way that I want to go? What am I doing wrong? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Huh, what was me? And it's just like, no, it doesn't have to be what was you. What are we doing? What can we change? And just trust, you got to trust the process, which is hard for a lot of us to do. So like you said, we want to know what we're doing wrong. What's like, we want to we wanna have control. We want to know how things are going to look when they're coming. And like, when you, I'm going to have to talk about God. But when you believe in God, though, and you know that God got you, you you allow him to guide the way you, you don't, you ask questions, but you ask the right questions. And you offer, yeah. you pace yourself and you're patient because it's like, I, I love to be in control. I don't want to say that. <laughs> we all like control. We, it it we is what it is. Yeah. If we could like get a sneak peek to our future, I'm pretty sure a lot of us would jump at the the sight of that. Some of us could actually see in the future, but that's, that may be another episode. Well, that's a whole nother <laughs> episode, okay? <laughs> like, that's a whole nother episode for a whole nother channel. Okay. Like, we got to go to a different channel for that one. Okay, we have to talk. But we should, though. Ooh. Yeah, we we'll talk about that. I'm a, but, we don't talk about that. <laughs> but like I was saying, if niggas would get a chance to, like, really look at their future, niggas would, would, would literally jump at the chance to see what their future would look like, and niggas would still not do all the right things to ensure that their future would look a certain way. Because your future looks like the way you want it once you start putting in the work. We are creating our future right now, even as we're having this conversation. We are creating yeah our future you have the tools and the resources to create the future that you want and yeah. i feel like i wish somebody would have told me that or maybe people may have told me that in school okay. but they never told me in a way that it made fucking sense yes <laughs> yes your future. this is your destiny but like it was such in a way that it was a uh, aggressive and also um fucking academic and school based they're like hey i know it's my future that's why i get a's and b's the fuck you talking about like no but it's so much more to that it's like even with school it's like there's so much more to school than a's and b's like you're in school to those lives you're in school to like almost find yourself not even just like in college but also like in high school middle school you're like constantly yep. talking about people learning how to be in different environments learning about different cultures and just like a lot of that, I don't feel like it's always expressed because school is looked at a place that you have to go and get your education, but you should be learning outside of school. You should be learning everywhere you go. Everything should be like not, not in a traditional sense of like learning, but everywhere you should go should be a place that you're developing new skills and learning about yourself, especially kids, not the yeah. school system. Yeah, because that's even what I'm learning now. The more that I uh, tap into different spaces because i started tapping in like different creativities and stuff like yeah going back to figure out like okay what were things that i like you know what i'm saying what are things that i genuinely enjoy to do and just doing them because they make me happy and they make me feel like me and the more that you tap into those things like the more that you learn like you know where your talents are like and what your natural abilities were and the things that really make you happy. And that's when you really start figuring out like, okay, this is where I can take my life. This is kind of where what I see me doing. And it's just like, I don't know, like at a certain point, if you decide to commit to it, it's just like, it opens up like a new world of possibilities. Plus right. like, if you put, if you decide to actually pursue what it is that you actually want to go for, you have more incentive to work towards it. I don't know. I felt like I became willing to do whatever when I figured out what I really wanted to do. Even though it meant that I had to make like significant changes in my life, it was still worth it. But again, that's like having a certain amount of faith, like Mm -hmm. in God and in yourself. Because it gets scary for real. It it does. Doing things different and new, I think is always kind of scary because it's it's new. You don't know what's there. But it's also exciting because it's like, it's new. It's like, I never done it. So like, 
I could do it the way I want to do it. I can like add my own flavor. I can have a different approach. I don't have to necessarily go by certain guidelines and a good, it could be a great thing if you allow it to yeah. truly embrace it instead of like, you know, we always sometimes we like to uh, just attach things and like have expectations and things are going to supposed to be a certain way and then we're disappointed when they don't turn out to be that way and I think that's normal in a sense but it's also like at some point it's nice to just like embrace things as they are as they kind of have to question everything it's like okay it is what it is this is a part of the process and I'm truly embracing it and I'm truly being present with the process and I'm allowing things to be with me. That that don't mean there was no bullshit, but uh, <laughs> that definitely be open. Feel me? I need a second. Keep going. <laughs> you got me. Keep going. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like a lot of shit be new. A lot of stuff that I'm currently doing in my life is very new. Yeah. Me, like especially me being a therapist. I'm just like I never thought being a fucking therapist. Like the way I was. My fucking mentor in the face was like, niggas don't go to therapy. I ain't say niggas, but I was like, niggas don't go to therapy. Like, you, if you want or something, but you're not. This is happy. It's not a thing. I literally had a mental health crisis the following year after I graduated. It was kind of, it was bizarre as shit. I'm just like, wow, here I am in fucking therapy. Right? <laughs> I've been played on for so long. Like, <laughs> It's fucking therapy. Because you get to that point where it's just like, ah, it cares. Whatever, man. It was just a lot. Close uh, secondary um, graduation. Like, I was just some people I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I don't know where I was going. I was like, I don't need a job because I have rent. I got bills to pay. And nothing. All these jobs suck. And I was just, like, constantly stressed about money. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm so stressed about money. I don't even want to be here. Because, like, I can't find a job. This is stressful. I ain't made to pay my bills. I'm going to be homeless somewhere. So I might as well just, like, say fuck it and not really do all of this. And, like, literally, right before I came to St. Louis, has the biggest, like, mental health crisis of my life. Oh, damn. Yeah. Which is bizarre. <laughs> Every time I say it, I'm just like, wow. It was crazy. St. Louis was, like, a saving grace for me, though. That's kind of crazy because, like, it, like, as crazy as those moments sound, like, in hindsight, you know what I'm saying? It was a very dark time Hell at yeah. that point in time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody's in the greatest. Not I'm not going to say nobody, but most people are not in the greatest spirit when they had that moment where it's like, all right, it's time to go to therapy. You're usually in a pretty fucked up place. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, don't, it doesn't come from a moment of sunshine. Like, hey, let me go to therapy. Every like, <laughs> oh, I like I can't even walk you through shit. I was like I went to my P C A P because I was like getting all my like fucking uh, um I was getting all my paperwork and shit done because I was supposed to go to Fordham that follow fall for like my master's program and yeah, I looked at the doctor and deal physical make sure you're good or whatever for school and shit and she was talking to me like she asked me like she's asking me some questions I don't remember her. It was I feel like it's the first time asking this because I don't remember her asking me about like my mental health. I guess like it was. It was a hot topic, and people cared about me too. All of a sudden, I don't know. I'm not gonna say it, but I'm like, I, I just don't remember ever having those type of conversations. But I remember she was talking to me about it, and I just remember her remember her asking me like this question about suicide, and I was like, Yeah, I've, I've had suicidal thoughts like a lot recently. Like, just telling her like what my shit was. Like, yeah, I'm going to suggest that you go um, speak to the people at the uh, UMDMJ or whatever. And I was like, uh, she wrote like lower for a while. I took it. I was like, uh, I'm gonna see about it. And I'm like, do I really want to go there? Do I really feel like I need to do that? I'm gonna say I'm gonna think. Where I was like, is this necessary? I'm like, I do want to feel better, but I'm just like, is this gonna really help me feel better? So I guess I fucking was like, fucky, like, I'm, I'm like, I feel like shit. Let me not feel good about myself. And it's just like, I don't know if like I have the willpower to like not kill myself, even though like I never had a plan. I'm just like, I'm so overwhelmed with yeah. in life that, like, if my life somehow ended, I would not be sad about it. Bro, I'm okay with that. Like, that's the feeling. Be it. gone and, like, me not being here on Earth and me just, like, leaving and not being <laughs> around anymore. Literally, it would be asking God, like, I don't know how you want to do it, but if you want to go ahead and take me, you can. Go ahead. <laughs> You're like, I ain't going to fight you. I ain't going to argue. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. I don't even know why I'm here anyway. 
do what you gotta do, Shawty. Like, do I just gotta like you know what I'm saying? What I gotta do? Take like, me out. <laughs> That's how it was. It was literally like that. It was like take me out. So I fucking I w- actually went to the fucking hospital. I was like, let me go get evaluated because that's what I think for me to do be evaluated. I'm like, okay, let me get evaluated, whatever. I went there, spoke to them. They was like, oh, what you need for a 24 hour evaluation? I was like, are you fucking kidding? Y'all not be in the motherfucking tech war, bitch. Shut me up. This why- damn. What was damn? And I was just like, they took all my stuff. I was literally in a room. It was like, I was on a bed, but there was like no sheet. There was nothing because obviously, tech war, they don't want you to have access to like, Hurt yourself, took my phone, took everything, ain't had no blankie. I was in there cold, like the floor was cold. I felt uncomfortable. I just felt like dirty, but I went to shower. And it was just like, I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. And I feel like they knew that, but they still had to do 24 evaluation just to like, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And I remember when the, I, they woke me up like some odd ass time. And this girl came in and she was asking this question. And she was like, it's not the result. I'm going to say it's major depression. I'm just like, major depression, bitch. This ain't no major depression. This is like me going through, obviously looking back, it's like I was going through something, but like it wasn't major depression. It was just a whole bunch of me not dealing with all of this shit and just a lot of sleep. Yeah. But it wasn't major depression. I, whatever. They had to upset me up with uh, a therapist and a, uh, a psychiatrist, and I was going to therapy three times a week, whatever. It was off the Obamacare. Shout out to Obamacare because that was the reason I had therapy for motherfucking free, okay? Mm-hmm. That's just a blessing. Therapy is expensive. And it should be free, but obviously, there should be paid. There's got to get paid too. That's we deal with a lot of heavy. Yeah, <laughs> the work is heavy as hell. Yeah. That shit was a mess. And then I got diagnosed. The the psychiatrist said I was bipolar too. I'm just like, what? I'm like, none of this makes sense. I was looking at the diagnosis. I'm just like, this, I don't have manic episodes. I may be irrational. And I mean, while well, out, but it's like, it's because I'm triggered. It's not because I'm fucking. Bruh, honestly, I'm glad my therapist didn't really um go into like saying anything about like any diagnosis for me. And I think it's like one of those things where it's just like, if I did have them, she ain't tell me. So they must not matter that much. Like, right. that my therapist was like that too. Because my last diagnosis when I was in St. Louis, he said it was PCSD because of the sexual, all the sexual trauma I've experienced. And it's like, Okay, I'm like, I'm not about to attach no diagnosis to me because I don't feel like, oh, I have PTSD. That's going to be, like, my life. Like, that's going to be, like, my story is, like, I just didn't feel, like, attached to any diagnosis. I'm just like, whatever. But when I was in my lab with my last therapist, we never talked about it. She's like, do you feel like you have PTSD? Does that feel like something you see? And I'm just like, I have triggers. I'm like, certain things definitely trigger me, but it's like, I don't really know. And I didn't really understand at that time i was just like i don't i'm like i don't see that but i can also see it how, how i got the diagnosis so yeah yeah you be knowing yourself to a certain extent but it'd be like yeah. it ain't that bad like yeah yeah it's, <laughs> yeah like, other three, i'm like major depression I'm like no you're definitely wrong and i'm like i think that was an intern too i'm just like no this is why i shouldn't be having motherfuckers just be doing so Cause this shit follow you to your life. You just diagnosing motherfuckers like, and then I was like, huh? Do your fall really just follow you from third characters? I don't. I feel like in a sense, some of your shit do. If you actually get transferred over, but like also if you talk to them and you're honest with them, you can tell them about the different diagnoses that you received too. I, I'm like, it's all about how transparent you want to be. With me, with my new therapist that I'm going to see on Thursday, I'm going to be very transparent because it's like. At the end of the day, I think the more open and honest I am, the better hope I will be because it's like, yeah, I sit here and lie. Why, why pay somebody to fucking lie? Bruh, and they, if they can't tell nobody. They can't tell nobody. And, like, the shit that they tell you is just, like, it's different than, like, advice from a friend or advice from a family member because one is unbiased first and foremost and then like the other one it's just like y'all don't have no you know what i'm saying it's no real position to take with a person so you know what i'm saying they literally like it's just they can give you a perspective that's like outside versus like when you talk to like people that are around you like inside opinion they might be giving you opinions based off their feelings or you know what i'm saying they experiences that they ain't dealt with and stuff like that and it's just like a therapist ain't really gonna tell you too much about your life like mine let me figure it out on my own and that's asking me certain questions 
They're the facilitator. It's like the therapist ain't going to tell you what to do. And I feel like a lot of people think they're going to therapy. Oh, therapy just be listening to me talk. They're not telling you what to do. They're not going to tell you what to do. They're going to guide you in a sense of you're going to come to your own conclusions because you're not going to say, oh, my therapist told me to do X, Y, and Z. No, your therapist guides you through the certain situation and you came to the conclusion of what you think is the next best step because it's not their job to tell you anything. It's their job to help you identify what your issues are and help you unpack that. And you're going to do most of the talking, but they're to facilitate in a sense. That's how I've like identified therapy and how I see it. And it's like, they're not going to tell you what to do. Because I used to be mad when I had my first year. But I'm just like, she's not telling me what to do. She's not telling me how to make my life better. She's not telling me how to go get a job and do all this stuff. They already know how to do that stuff. They're there to pull it out. But you have to be willing to be uncomfortable and vulnerable enough to allow them to see and know so they can best assist you. Absolutely. Like... You have to really be ready. You have to really be ready to just be open and, like, let them help you. You know what I'm saying? If you're not ready to do the work, it ain't no point of going. And if you're not ready to be honest, it ain't no point of going. It ain't no point of fucking you. And I feel like you pay y'all there to <laughs> fucking lie. They're getting paid regardless, but you want to go and lie. That's your money. That's your time being wasted because it's like you're going to be the one who has to keep coming back to therapy because your goals are not being met. And you're not really progressing because you're not doing the work. So it's like, if you're going to go to therapy, be prepared to do the work. Also come with some goals in mind of like why you're seeking therapy. What is you want to get out of it? When I went to my last therapist, I had really concrete goals, which I feel like I've met. And then as I went to mm-hmm. therapy, well, actually, I feel like I can't out. I, I started off with therapy back in July 2020. So I'm like, oh, I'm so angry. I'm in this relationship. I don't know how to control my anger. Like, this girl just, like, pisses me off so bad. I need to, like, work on how to be a better girl. That was literally why I fucking went to therapy, right? Bro, me too. <laughs> yeah, that like shit ever. I'm like, why am I going to therapy? It wound up being about me, and I broke up with her. I just... <laughs> this bitch, change. It, it literally she came about me, and I broke up with her. It, it gave me the confidence to leave that fucking relationship. Surely the fuck me, okay? <laughs> You were okay. redefining my spine. What? So I'm like, why am I about to let therapy be people up and down? I had all these issues. I go to therapy and teach somebody. I'm just like, every, the more I was in therapy, the more I'm like, why am I with this shit? Bruh, bruh. Because you realize, like, because once you go to therapy, you start doing the work. And when you do start doing the work, you start seeing the world through a different perspective. And then you start looking at the situation like, hold on, I'm the only one really fucking doing the work. Only the one doing the work. And niggas was not, they were saying the same. It's like, why do you expect me to change and you're going to stay the same? Absolutely. You yes. Out. Not me alone. Like, it's a definitely, if I have issues, you have issues because we attract each other somehow, some way, and we're both on the same wavelength, that it is just not on me. But it was easy yeah. on me and point the fingers at me and just make it all about me and how I was just this whatever person, which is all good because I needed to hear those things to push me back into therapy to get my shit together. And it's like, I have a yeah. bit, um, experience with my ther- my last therapist. And, and, and what's so dope about it is like, um, I used to think that I was going to be in therapy for a long time. I thought that I was so fucked up in the head. I was going to need a therapist like, Forever. yeah, but like, that's not how therapy works. So like a big part of the reason why they guide you, yo, guide you through and make you figure it out and they kind of make you answer the questions and figure out what works for you is so that you learn how to just think that way in your know, everyday life. And like, eventually like you're able to get through those moments without the therapies without the whole point the whole fucking point the whole point it's <laughs> literally give you the skills you're able to do it without them the, nobody i don't think the goal of therapy is to be in therapy for a long time i thought the same thing i'm like damn i'm supposed to be in therapy <laughs> Yo, and it's like that's literally six me in therapy for years i'm like people crazy to tell me in therapy for years and it's like you don't have to be in therapy that long, but the, I feel like when you're not willing to do the work and you're not really to be honest with yourself, yeah. you being that motherfucker for a long time. Unless you will. It's going to seem like you're not getting nowhere because it's like you're not getting nowhere because you're it's not doing nowhere. the work. Yeah. Okay. But I, um, I, yeah, that, that's really shit. Cause I remember I went to see my therapist for like once every week until like 
every other week, yeah, you know, twice a month. Because it's like I, I, I understand it. Like I, because at, at some point it can become a clutch. You could be leaning on your therapist. You could become codependent on your therapist. Like, oh, this went wrong in my life. I can't wait to tell my therapist. Oh, this happened. I can't wait to tell my therapist. Like, when that's cool in the beginning. It's but- okay, but after a while, you gotta kind of know how to figure shit out on your own and be able to problem solve on your own. Yeah, that's like. Um, it was so funny because in the beginning I was, I thought I was going to be codependent. I really did, but I had a codependent mindset, but like, I was just like, I like, you know what I'm saying? When me and my therapist first started, you know, you know, doing the thing, like, you know what I'm saying? Doing the mm-hmm. thing where it's like therapy ends and it's like, so how long is it going to be this time? And it's just like, oh, um, I still want to come. Well, first it's where it's just like, I don't want to break up yet. I- I don't want to do it yet. I want to see you every other week. Like, I yeah. still, still want to see you every other week. And then after right. a while, like, that every other week comes by and it's just like, oh, we can do two weeks. We can do two mm-hmm. weeks. Right. We can do a month now. And then after a while, it's just like. I'm good. Yeah. Like, I'll I'll call you when I need you. I think I'm all right. Like, yeah. It's like you graduated. <laughs> it really it is really like graduation. It's like, okay, I've done all the work now. Thank you. Until next trauma. Until late in the future traumas. That's why I feel right now. I'm just like, I feel like I could have gotten another therapist and I moved back because moving back, even though like I'm I'm from Jersey, moving back was such an adjustment for me, especially because of how I left back um from St. Louis. It's it wasn't my last relationship was traumatic. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Especially like my last interaction with my girlfriend and like the whole fighting and the whole me like literally having to make the choices like do I respond back to this or do I like call a friend and help her get me out of this shit? Have her help me get out of this shit because I can really fight that, tear up some ass. I know the results of that will be jail time. I know that nothing will come out of that. It will be never ending. It will be like, it would just not be a good time. And it's like, I was so over it. Like, how should we have to fight people? No, that's real. That's so real. When I came back home, I was like, I was like angry. I was upset. I had so many ranges of feelings. Cause I'm just like, I wasn't ready to leave just yet. And I was really starting to have fun, especially like with work and getting closer to like my coworkers and stuff like that, which is really my family. And uh, if we're going to keep it above, it really wasn't like cool because it was like a dysfunctional family. And I just wasn't ready to leave. And I just was like so mad at her. Because I'm just like, this this girl is the reason why I have to leave them behind. I have to get rid of all my stuff. I have to pack up and leave and go home because of her. I was heavy on the supporting the thing. But I'm like, no, you're the reason why this is happening. Because you didn't want to make up your mind and leave the relationship when you had the chance to. When you're supposed to be leaving, you had no reason being in the relationship in the first lucky place. But she wanted to be hard and learn. Yeah. So now you have to go back home and start over because you don't want to follow the rule. You don't want to listen to your intuition. You want people to almost feel sorry for you because of the decision that you made. And I'm just like, no way. The accountability. I, yeah. It wasn't that shit hit me. It hit me. Okay. It hit me. Ah, that shit hit because I felt it. I felt that. It, it took a while to get there, but it's like, you know what? I can be accountable. I don't know for what, I, what I've done because I know that that wasn't all on her. Like, that's I've seen it. Yeah. And like the demise of the relationship and also just like all the shit I had to go through. But I'm like, it was a lot. It was wrestling back home because I used to be so, I used to be so angry. I used to be anxious. I used to cry a lot because I'm like, I'm scared of being home because like the place that traumatized me, I ran away from home to St. Louis because of all the shit that I've experienced. Yeah. I happily left to go to St. Louis, even though, like, I cried like a motherfucker that first year. I left because it's like, it's so traumatic. It's so much time I've experienced here. Everything triggers me. It makes me angry. And then I'm like, I have to go back into that environment where, like, I don't feel safe. I don't know what's going to happen next. And I was upset about that. And from this, this place I've talked about with people about that all the time that I experienced is like, I don't have to go back into that and, like, start over and go face people and like kind of let them know like I was in a shitty ass domestic like <laughs> violence relationship and like now I'm back home living with my mom like, that was a hard reality for me to sit in yeah and uncomfortable <laughs> but it's crazy how like as time goes on that perception changes oh, yeah. and like 
you start to see like, what the the benefits are of that situation. Like, you know what I'm saying? The things that matter then don't really matter as much anymore. Yeah. Because, like, you picked yourself up and, like, you know what I'm saying? You're in a better place and, like, you know exactly where the fuck you're going to. Like, it's that just like, be. yeah, it's just like knowing that you did the work. You know what I'm saying? It's just like everything that has transpired from that time to now is just like as difficult as those moments are in time. It's just like on the other side of it, it's just like, okay. I know what that was. Like, I know what it was. I know what happened. I made peace with it. Mm-hmm. Now let's move on. Because we got, like, new things and different things coming. So, like, yeah. these things don't even matter. That's real as shit. I love it's, it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love full circle moments. I've gone on a year next month, literally a month from today, I want to say, since I've been back. And I, the way my life has really transformed... I didn't think that I could turn into like a batter bitch, but like, like you know, a batter bitch. Like, and it's like I I love it. You feel me? Like this is this is what it's like to really trust the unknown. Yeah, believe in God. Even though some days I'm doubtful, every day I, I'm grateful because it's like I have a roof over my head, I have food in the fridge, I have a job that I, I get to go to, that I get to work with kids and speak life into them. I get to be an impact. I get to influence people, not just like in a school, strangers. Like, I get to just see life with a different pair of eyes. Like, I okay. Like, around me, within me, on a whole nother level that I didn't even realize was fucking thing. So it's like, okay, the wing is fucking out. 29. It's definitely giving, it's giving abundance, it's giving new life and energy, it's giving like, look, if you want things to look different, you have to move different. You have to Mm -hmm. down and say, what in my life that I'm I'm not getting, that I want, and what role am I playing and not getting that? Okay, okay, absolutely. And then once you start changing those things, everything else around you changes. Yeah, hell fucking yeah, because I used to be depressed around this motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, bitch, you came home, you in a yoga program, you came home, you got interviews on top of interviews, you got jobs wanting to hire you like off the Zat, and you've only been here for a couple of weeks. It's like, uh, it's- I'm like, I have a lot going. Yes, the fuck you do. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't want to embrace that. And it's like, oh, no, nah, it's not enough. It's not enough because I'm basing my expectations. And what I'm doing off the next motherfucker when it's just like my journey gonna look different because it's me. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, problems have been following. My shit is different. God paved the way for me now. If I want to sit here and compare my shit to other people, my shit gonna be delayed because I'm sitting here comparing my shit to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you know the shit. <laughs> yeah. It's just like that, though. It, it, it really drew. And it's like, it's time. It's, it, it was time out for that. It was time out for the comparison games. Mm-hmm. It was time out for not believing in myself. It was time out for me thinking I'm not good enough. It was just time out for all of the fucking, the mindset that was keeping me behind, the limited b- mindset, like, mm-hmm. that. Like, I can have it all, and I can have it the way I want. I can manifest the life that I really fucking want. And I don't have to wait for nobody to tell me that. I don't need nobody to give me validation on that. Only God can help me. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Period. Okay. Period. You spare. You going in. Okay. You going in. <laughs> I love it. No, you don't have to stop. Hey, it's been you don't have to stop. No. <laughs> I think it's been, I've been. I've been ready to say this. This is why. I don't, I don't really talk a lot, but I feel like when I talk with you and like not even on a podcast and just like when we talk in general, I feel like you are one of the very few people who fucking understand and get it. And I don't feel like I even tell my story a lot to people. It's because I fear that judgment. But it's like, I think the more I share, the more it makes sense because mm-hmm. niggas don't know why I am the way I am, why the way I come. I've been through a lot of shit. <laughs> But I, I still try to find a good in every fucking thing. And I'm still going through a lot of shit. But, like, I don't want to sit here and make that my story because it's something I'm experiencing, but it's not my whole entire life. It's like, and it's, it's going to be over 
It's not going to be something I'm going to carry on my back forever. Like I've done my trauma. I used to wear my trauma around like a badge of honor. Like, yeah, I've been through all this and therefore you got to kiss my ass. And that's why I'm a hard ass. And that's why I can't be vulnerable. And that's why I can't share. And that's why I have no ability to be compassionate with others because you don't know my life. You don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. And I just want everybody, to, I want everybody to feel all my trauma, all my anger. And I was so unable to like really come out of that shit. Damn, that's so loud. That's so loud. It makes so much sense now. <laughs> it makes so much sense now. And like, real as fuck. Yeah. It's real as fuck. It gets to a point where you just become unapologetic. You put in so much work. It's just like, look, I'm finna be happy. And it's just like, I'm unapologetic about it. I'm finna be happy. I'm about to go get everything that I want. You know what I'm saying? I'm capable of getting it. And you know what I'm saying? I'm ready to claim what's mine. You know what I'm saying? I've been playing victim for so long, mm -hmm. not taking accountability for my bullshit for so long. That's what held me back. Hell yeah. Getting around and other people, you know what I'm saying? Saying, why am I not this? Why am I not We're that? Gossiping. Hey, yes, when is it going my time? You know what I'm saying? Instead of putting it in, putting in the work to make it your motherfucking time. You know what I'm saying? God was laid on us. Exactly. He was waiting for you to step the fuck up. He was ready for ready for you to put on the shoes he gave you. That, like that's it. That's all. Like you know what I'm saying. He gave you a lane. And he gave you something. He don't want you to be walking around depressed. He don't want you to be walking around wearing your trauma. He wants you to heal from it so you can put your shoes on and step into the role that he gave you because he wants to bless you. You just have to get up and you have to take it. Okay. You have to go for it. Okay, you have, to go. you have to wake up and say, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm ready for something different. Nobody's going to make my life different. I have to make it different. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is it that I want to do? Where is it that I'm trying to go? What changes do I need to make? What areas of my life can be better? What makes me feel happy? What makes me feel, feel fulfilled? How do I get more of that into my life? Oh, I might have to sacrifice some of these things that don't make me feel good or don't make me feel that way. You either okay. gonna let it go or you gonna change and you gonna put them shoes on. Let go on my God, okay? Okay. Yeah. It don't have to be this hard. Honestly, it don't have to be this hard. I remember being so like, you know what I'm saying? I, I was a, so like upset like a couple of weeks ago. And it's just like, I'm thinking to myself like, why, why is this so hard? What's happening right now? Cause like, like, I know that when I meet, like, resistance, right, when you start asking yourself them questions, it's time to pull back and reevaluate. Mm -hmm. It's time to see what's, like, really going on up in your head because you shouldn't feel that way. You know what I'm saying? So it's better to just go ahead and get to the root of it mm -hmm. instead of staying there, at least in my opinion. I don't like feeling like that. So, mm -hmm. like... <laughs> Like, I had to realize that I'm feeling that way because I wasn't looking at a certain situation from a right angle, mm -hmm. right? I was selling myself short. And, you know, I, I needed to make changes. The reason why things weren't moving in my life was because I was doing, I wasn't doing the things that I needed to do. I wasn't fully stepping into my power. What wasn't picking up your feet. I wasn't fully stepping into my power. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to keep it safe and play it safe and, like, you know what I'm saying? Do entirely too fucking much. Force something that wasn't meant to be forced, basically. Because you can't force shit. You know what I'm saying? If a shoe ain't fitting, it ain't your shoe. <laughs> That's not the shoe he gave me. Okay, Cinderella. Okay, look, you just got to <laughs> you gotta move on. You got a glass slipper. It's just not that one. So, like, you got to move on. But it's just like, I just had to let go. And I just had to say, you know what? If this isn't working then it must be time to move on to something else. Yeah. It must be time for something else. So I'm going to let this go because if I hold on to it, it'll just cause more damage than it will help. And that's how you just let the fuck go. And then after that, it's just like things change. Things start changing like immediately because that's exactly what he wants you to do. He wants you to let go and trust and not stay in that place. He just wants you to fucking... Let go and let him work some shit in your life. You just have mm -hmm. to let him. You got to let go of that control. Let go of that. Oh, I expected it to be this way, though. Like, it should be like this. And it's just like, nah, that's not how it was meant to happen. Play blank, period. Okay. So, 
you gonna let me do my job or you gonna keep standing in the way? And yeah. then, okay. but you know, on that note, <laughs> I think we should go ahead and wrap it up because we'll be here the rest of the night. <laughs> We're we are very catty, bro. That's why we gotta get some going because we have a lot to discuss that we can't tack in one episode. Hell yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. We're here to talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but all right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for coming to another episode of Think of Mercy Speaker. I know it was a little different. Put it in the comments. Let us know how you liked it. You know what I'm saying? Um, You know, different vibes. We trying something new, something different. Give us the feedback. Hey, where can they follow you at? Y'all can follow me on Facebook. I gave you the CR earlier, but I'll give it out again. My first name is K-A- C-H-E-E-N-A, last name Lucas on Facebook. My Insta is K-A underscore C-H-E-E-N-A. And again, on Twitter, at Baked Cake. I don't think I even gave them on Twitter. <laughs> I like I love If you said it, I will remember. <laughs> but uh, Twitter, Baked Cake, I'm on it every now and then talking my shit. That, that's my jam. But uh, y'all can follow me on my socials or whatever. Feel me. And also, I would have, can I add one thing? Yes, ma'am. If anybody's interested in learning about yoga or becoming a yoga, a certified yoga teacher, I'll let your girl. Because I, I know about some stuff and I can put y'all on. Okay. 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 <laughs> I want to know what you know, what they know, what you know. I what they know. about it. Yeah. Uh, uh-uh. Where I got my certification. <laughs> far, far, aka Long Restore Collective. They are currently enrolling students for the, uh, Fall session, which is going to be on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 6 to 15. Day 15 is virtual, which is really nice because if you can't really, it's like really nice to go to because it's like it's online, it's accessible, it's, it's actually live. You're not getting pre recorded sessions, it's live every single time. So it's like, I think that's so dope because you get to talk to really cool people and connect with some dope as yogis. I've been connecting with so many cool ass people who are like becoming my lifelong friends. So I would definitely recommend it because it's more than just like learning about postures. You learn so much about yourself. So if you want to tap into that, I'll let you girl. Hell yeah. We gonna have to come and talk about like the benefits of like hobbies and like uh, you know, uh certain habits and stuff like that. Why yoga is essential and shit like that. But I know that's a like it's a whole nother topic. For home living. <laughs> oh yeah, we want we want definitely get into it. We definitely want to talk about that at some point, but you know, keep me posted. All right, I got you. I got you. Ruby ready to Ruby ready to fight. Okay, <laughs> y'all can find me at Marissa Y seventeen on Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter when I feel like it, but I never feel like it. And Marissa Yarbrough on Facebook. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube at Baker versus Speak. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at thinker versus speaker and tiktok at thinker versus speaker pc um i think that's everything you got anything else for the people uh and that is all that i have for today it was great talking to you and being on your podcast thanks for coming through thanks for having my back today i appreciate you i appreciate you i appreciate you don't don't it's all good all right uh, y'all have a good evening, good morning, whatever time it is that y'all listening to this. So we going to um, see y'all next time. Oh, and one more thing before I get out of here. I almost forgot. I want to thank everybody that has been rocking with us since the beginning. Everybody that has been um, coming on with us just along the way, along the journey. So we about to start switching some things up. We got some more interesting things coming um, within the next few weeks. Um, so we going to change the schedule up. So thank you to everybody that tuned in every Monday and Friday. Going forward, we're going to be tuned in every Friday. So we're going down to one episode a week. But just trust me, we got something else cooking to fill up the rest of the week. So on that note, I think it's time to go ahead and get out of here. All right, good night, y'all. Everybody have a good evening. Enjoy y'all day.
Smooth Nate.